Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, Honey Bunches of Oats. Good cereal. Cinnamon Bunches. He's no, He knows what he's doing for sure. I don't know if it's my favorite cereal, but it, it's a good one. I've had it many times. Europe banned these American foods. Here's why. Sure. Evan Edinger? Edinger? Forget. Good channel, good videos. Let's go. Honey Bunches of Oats is my favorite cereal of all time. I even said so in my British vs. American cereal tier list video I made somewhere above the screen. But did you know, it's actually banned for sale in the UK because of its carcinogenic additives? Good. This is how I pour milk. Great. <laughs> it's real good, though. So today we're going to be looking at a lot of foods that are enjoyed in the States, but are outright banned in the UK and EU for various reasons. And in a couple weeks... Why do I feel like the reasons it's going to be banned in the US is going to be for economic reasons and foods being banned in the EU are going to be for weird chemicals that America allows that they don't want. J just a guess. We'll be doing a part two to this where we look at the vice versa there, the EU foods that are banned in the US. So be sure to subscribe, okay? It'll be coming soon. Or ring my bell. Actually, speaking of bells, cowbells, the first item on our list today is milk, or rather what they put into milk in the US. Recombinant somatotropin, RBST, also previously used to be called bovine growth hormone, is a genetically engineered hormone injected into dairy cows to increase the means of milk production. Now, if you are an American, I'm assuming you've heard of bovine growth hormone at some point in your life. I know growing up, my mom would tell me that girls were getting to puberty earlier and earlier because of all the hormones that they're pumping into the cows, which is coming coming out of the milk. Now, that actually was fully a myth, and there's no science to substantiate that. And in fact, the RBST that is put into cows, in American cows at least, has no scientific backing to prove that it has any negative repercussions on humans at all. I'm no biologist, but I don't think hormones are just... Yeah. However, that didn't stop the EU and UK following up with banning its sale of milk from RBST cows anywhere within their bounds because of the effect it has on the cows themselves. EU commissions that did studies on RBST in cows found that the quality of life of cows given the hormone was drastically worse than cows that were not. If you think about it, their udders are just getting so much more full than they're meant to, weighing them down, being uncomfortable. It is a bit of a contentious issue, especially with the whole got milk uh, milk lobby in the States really trying to push its way into EU markets, but the EU being very firm. There are some reports in the 90s that were purporting this to just be a... It was with like a white glue or something like that. False advertisement. I wanted a milk mustache like that, but I guess they use like white out or something. Makes sense. EU markets, but the EU being very firm. There are some reports in the 90s that were purporting this to just be a complete trade war economic type of thing, and that the EU made things up. But at the end of the day, the US's FDA, or Food and Drug Administration, have stated that food products made from RBST-treated cows are safe for human consumption, and no statistically significant difference exists between milk derived from RBST-treated cows and not. And there's yet to be a conclusive study disproving that. Now, despite this being a worse experience for the cow... Okay. 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 I... In the states that are given this hormone, you might be wondering, well, why do they do it anyway? Well, the answer is kind of easy. No. <laughs> the average cow injected with RBST nets the farmer an extra fifteen dollars and eighty-eight cents in profit. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. 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 So here's a big uh, conundrum that's going on in my brain right now. Okay. It's will do I trust a company to make sure everything is perfectly safe? And tested over profits. No, I don't. Okay, I don't. But does that therefore mean that any evidence that they come out that says their stuff is safe is false? Well, no, that, that doesn't make sense either. So just because you, you know where I'm getting here, I just... Yeah, I know that they could lie, but just because I know that they could lie doesn't mean that everything they say is a lie, and it uh, could be harmless. 
Gotta milk them for all they're worth. No bull. Next up, everybody's favorite gamer soda, Mountain Dew. Everybody knows Mountain Dew, right? Baja it's like Blast. the super punchy, citrusy flavored soda that- Only from Taco Bell. You're probably thinking, wait a minute, that's not banned in the EU. I've seen that. Well, you see the original recipe for Mountain Dew included BVO, which caused it to be banned by both the EU and Japan because BVO or brominated vegetable oil contains bromine. What's wrong with bromine? That's usually what I say when someone tries to take my Mountain Dew, bro. My. Well, well my this is guy with the puns that when it builds up in the body has a very high potential to, I don't know, cancer, cause skin damage, memory loss, nerve damage. That's the main reason why it's banned in Japan. In the it's EU. like the and radium so, girls is like we'll fix this recipe for you guys since you don't want nerve damage. The thing about BVO is that it was sensationally referred to as the thing that is in brominated flame retardant just because that really spreads with Facebook moms, you know, like, oh, my God, flame retardant in my child's dream. Right. But the main problem that see we that 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 doesn't jar me. Like you can tell me, oh, the same thing used in your cereal is also used in shampoo. That 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 goes that uh, my answer is, and you know it's like and yeah that shockingly huh wait what wait it's in a flame retardant, but how do you know that that that, that it just doesn't make sense when you think about it. It's like that. Does that mean it's bad? I. Uh, but I do know they thought that putting radium on clocks, like radium paint on clock faces, so like in the early 1900s, late 1800s, I think, um, they could, you know, read the clocks in the dark because it would glow in the dark. Well, turns out pretty radioactive. And so, clearly that's happened in the past, and that's why I'm, I'm not going to trust. I mean, I'm still going to drink milk. We had in our household Mountain ah. Dew was any one of us had any Mountain Dew, we would be bouncing off the walls. The amount of sugar and caffeine in that stuff, boom. Sure, large amounts of BVO can cause birth defects. I would only. Boys, but when used in a soda, it helps all the oil flavorings not dissolve. So that way they can separate and give you a nice in your mouth and in your womb, I guess. But if you are an American connoisseur of the Mountain Dew or the fabled Baja Blast, don't worry. It's not in the recipe anymore. So for the most part, you're fine. All I do know is it's not a Legal, and the FDA says it's okay. Now let's just have a look at the Walmart brand Mountain Dew and... Ugh. Now this next one might ruffle a few feathers, but you might not know this. Chickens in the US are chlorinated. That means they are washed with a chlorine bath to prevent the spread of salmonella and such before you all eat your lovely chicken. Now, this is absolutely banned in the UK, the EU, and many other countries who don't think we should be eating things that have been washed with chlorine. That being said, the main reason isn't probably what you're thinking. It's actually because according to the EU law, they felt that by just using a quick chlorine bath, it's kind of cutting corners and allowing for farmers to basically not care about their entire production line and just go, we'll fix it in post, essentially. We'll just okay. have really, really dirty, unhealthy, unsanitary farms and then just wash it all away with chlorine. They that makes sense. We're not gonna allow that. We'd rather you actually have a good, healthy, safety production line rather than just bandage it. I'm sure- Well, at the end of the day, I wanna know it's safe to eat, right? So if it does, make the things before the chicken worse but in the end it causes less sickness well i think that's the important part am i a psycho or at this point you've seen those gruesome images of chickens in incredibly small pens with nowhere to go really dirty living space well the whole point of this law isn't necessarily to protect humans from chlorine but to make sure that that is much less likely to happen to have these ah. really unsanitary living spaces. I see the, the point. Whereas in the US, it doesn't really matter how the chickens are raised, how they're stored, how they're butchered. As long as you wash it with a bit of chlorine, everything's kind of okay. I don't really know how I feel about it. Obviously, I've grown up in the yeah, States. Same. I've eaten plenty of chicken and I'm totally fine. How would you feel about this? I, I, like I said, I don't think it has anything to do with human health as much as just making sure your production line is up to scratch. Right, okay. So for the animal livelihood part that makes sense i yeah i want to consume the animal which means i want the animal to be killed that's unfortunately how you eat meat okay but that doesn't mean i want it to that doesn't mean i don't care how it suffers before it's killed i do 
But if we're just talking about cleanliness, then again, oh my god, it's chlorinated. Well, is that bad? Hey guys, let me know, okay? I'll look in the comments. Scratch. As a fun fact, a big post-Brexit fear was that because of the supply chain issues that Brexit would cause, the UK would then have to start relying on We have to get American chicken! chicken. No! In the UK Back were very much against this. However, that was one of the very, very, very few Brexit fears that actually didn't come to fruition. So there's that. We do not use chlorinated chicken. <sighs> just everything else that went wrong. Ractopamine. Now this next one isn't just banned in the UK, the EU, Japan. No, it's actually banned in 160 countries. That's over three quarters of the known world, <laughs> as if there's an unknown world. However, the US is standing true saying, it's totally fine. We're gonna put Ractopamine in our port. 40 to 60. Well, actually, <laughs> isn't that a sort of a skewed statistic? Because um, Islamic countries don't eat pork, right? Or majority Islamic countries aren't going to have a big pork import. There are a good amount of Islamic countries, right? Aren't, aren't there like 50 or something like that? And so that's going to skew the, the results. Like, I, I don't, I, I think, because then you're just adding them into countries that don't want the pork because, am I making sense here? Like you're you're going to skew the statistics by by including Muslim countries who don't import pork from anywhere because they're Muslim, not because they're it's any cleaning process or how they raise it or whatever. And then you're putting that into this. I, I think that it's a kind of a false statistic. Does that make sense? Sixty percent of pig. It's totally fine. We're gonna put ractopamine in our pork. Forty to sixty percent of pigs farmed in the U.S. have ractopamine, a drug that enhances the lean muscle mass of the animals. There are definitely some serious questions about the safety of ractopamine, whose only use originally was to treat people with asthma until it was found out that it increased the production of animals. That we went, let's just put it in some piggies. The National Pork Producers Council of the states have been lobbying the EU like mad, demanding that all food health and safety concerns be completely dismissed because, well, profits. Those pigs with ractopamine bring home quite the bacon. Say no the more. Or Allow European it. Food Safety Authority have said that the use of ractopamine in pigs has a very large chance of creating downer pigs. Downer pigs are essentially pigs that have been engorged with this lean muscle mass. <laughs> For a split second, I just I just pictured a pig in like goth clothing with like long black hair. <laughs> like smoking a cigarette. Point where downer pigs are essentially pigs that have been engorged Emo with pigs. this lean muscle mass Ugh. to the point where they can no longer Whatever. even stand. Their point basically means. <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing at my own joke. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm funny to me. Sometimes. With this lean muscle mass to the point where they can no longer even stand. Their point basically meaning that this is incredibly cruel to the pigs. Also, rectopamine has shown to have catastrophic effects on the human cardiovascular system, as well as increase your anxiety levels. Some U.S. pork producers have begun phasing out the use of the drug, but like 160 countries. Like, the U.S. FDA has got to be sitting there like, am I out of touch? No, it's the 160 other countries that are wrong. Or rather, well, these, these pork lobbyists have given me quite a lot of money, so I think it's kind of fine, so. So we've had milk, we've had chicken, we've had pork. What is next? Bread? All right, get ready for this, because bread so- Bready. I have, there's a double problem, because I'm like, wait, I don't trust the, the business aspect of clearing something and saying it's okay. But then I'm like, wait, the, you're, there's a there are businesses in other countries who might want to make sure they they get their pork from someone else for for business interests and so I'm now I'm like oh crap who do I believe I'm in like a oh wait you want profit oh wait you want profit too oh wait you know sold in the states contain get bready is next bread. All right, get ready for this because bread sold in the States contains potassium bromate. And listen, it's not your bromate. In fact, potassium bromate is used in the bread making process in the States because it helps bread rise faster, higher, and makes bread manufacturers quite a lot of dough. <laughs> 
but it's also heavily linked to cancer, nervous system damage, and kidney damage. And in the States, it's in pretty much all foodstuffs. Bagels, bread rolls, Ooh. bread crumbs, you name it. While it is completely banned in the UK and EU, in which our bread doesn't taste like sugar. I'm gonna be real sad to find out that the Cheesecake Factory bread has this stuff in it because that that bread, I don't care if you say it's sweet, it's delicious. Now, the not buttery. all bread products mm. in the States contain potassium bromate. For those products that don't contain it, there are worse things like something I'm not going to be able to pronounce. <laughs> For instance, like Pillsbury breadsticks, a lot of the nice little bun things you can get in the freezer aisle at Walmart, like Jimmy Dean sandwiches, breakfast rolls and such. They contain azodi carbonamide, which is a chemical compound found in yoga mats, as well as shoe soles. Yummy. Again, I, yeah, I just, I don't know how to compute that. Telling me it's in something else, it just makes me be like, okay, is it bad, you know? Like, this is the same stuff that's in jet fuel, but, like, it's this unrelated part of the... Get I, uh, about. Makes it extra spongy. The reason why so many U.S. manufacturers use azote carbonamide is that it makes the bread stuff look a lot whiter. Yeah, both in bread and cereal flour, it's used as a whitening agent and dough conditioner. While the FDA thinks it's totally fine to add this chemical compound to basically any bread product under the sun, it is banned in Europe, Singapore, and many other countries for its heavy link to respiratory problems as well as other health issues. And in Singapore specifically, if you are caught using this substance in any of your manufacturing process, you're jailed for 15 years and a fine of up to $450,000. Jesus. But I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> Even Australia, who's usually pretty chill about a lot of things, do not use azote carbonamide. Don't do it. Finally, we've gotten to my favorite cereal. A lot of cereals in the States use BHT, which is a flavor enhancer. Now, I've got no problem with most flavor enhancers. Spices. Heck, I love me some monosodium glutamate, okay? Throw a little bit of MSG and everything. Mwah. Xanthan the gum. The BHT, well, it's a little different. See, it's put in a lot of these cereals and things to enhance the flavors, and it only comes with mild side effects of decreasing your testosterone count and decreasing the quality of your sperm. But also, there have been numerous studies okay. to prove that BHT right. is an I'm endocrine out. disruptor, so it actually has way more effects than that. Is it really making the food taste that much better for me to have less sperm? Yeah, it's delicious. Oh no, what, what's it got in it? Oh, your sperm is gone. <laughs> BHT. But it does lower your sperm count. <laughs> BHT. Oh god, that was a good general reaction right there. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't, probably nothing good. Is used in a lot of these cereals because it just gives you that ah, little bit of a fresh feeling in the box. They actually line the bags with BHT, so it's just a bit fresher for a bit longer. Now, the US FDA has insisted BHT is totally safe in small quantities, but I don't know about you, but growing up in the States, I would eat three to four bowls of cereal in one sitting sometimes because that was my balanced breakfast, so. I mean, only after, like, if you got home after partying in college and there was a box of Captain Crunch, that would be gone quick. I don't know how I feel about that. Now, cereal producer General Mills in the States has agreed to phase out its use of BHT, but Kellogg's and Post in the States have agreed that maybe the pros outweigh the cons to their profits, I suppose. They don't really see it as a surreal problem. Now, I remember a couple years back, they had finally brought over Fruit Loops to the UK. And I was like, whoa, finally, Ooh, we get good. a cool American cereal. However, this is what it looks like. If you're an American, Where's you're the like, red? what the hell is the, I know. Here's the difference between US and yeah. UK Fruit Loops. Uh, you see, no. no, no, I don't care what he t if this is made out of cat piss and it gives you brain cancer immediately. What the hell is I'll that? stick I to this. Here's the difference between US and UK Fruit Loops. You see, legally speaking, you can't really sell the American Fruit Loops because it contains so many E numbers, is what they're called over here. I only recently found out about E numbers. My girlfriend brought it up like, oh, that's got a lot of E numbers. And I was like, Evan numbers? <laughs> Even no. better. E in E numbers actually stands for Europe, and E numbers represent a oh, number. Oh, things that aren't allowed in Europe.
what, we can't eat silver? For each different food additive that exists. And in the US, we've got E numbers in pretty much everything. Think of all the brightly colored food you know. That's some E numbers right there. In 2007, a UK study found Fruits. a clear link between the use of specific E numbers and hyperactivity in children. Now, the E numbers that they actually found... It got me. Increase the hyperactivity in children were E102, E110, E122, and E124. All those different food dyes. Now, following these studies, there was huge public outcry in the UK. And in 2009, the UK implemented a temporary ban on the specific E numbers listed in the studies. But by ban, I don't mean that you weren't allowed to sell any products with them. Rather, you could, as long as somewhere on your packaging there was a warning that stated that consumption of this item may have an adverse effect on the activity and attention of children. Now, as you've seen, usually when this type of thing happens, the FDA just digs their heels in, supported by lots of lobbyists' money, and they go, everything's fine, totally fine, don't worry about it. But even in this case, the FDA actually had to come out and be like, well, there is a chance that some children also will develop hivish rash as a reaction to these e-numbers, so it just seems like... Does that mean any kind of flavored drink, like Gatorade or juice? So many has... cons for what realistically is just brightly colored cereals. That being said, sometimes the UK recipe of a US product is just awful. I mean, talking about the Fruit Loops, listen, I know it kind of looks like grass. Those are vegetable loops, all right? Those are fruit loops. And it's not as appealing as the pretty colors that caused me hyperactivity as a child, but it would be okay if it didn't taste like garbage. It just tastes like cardboard. It kind of ruined the whole appeal of the sugary cereal. I just add sugar. Like, why not just add sugar? I do think it's very- uh, There gets to a point where, like, I just throw up my hands, okay? I, I only have enough- Oh my god. Oh, I can't eat that for for before I'm just like, okay, it's just a risk game. Like me worrying about all of these things is now becoming more unhealthy than if I ate them all, you know? It's like I I, I at some point it's just like, okay, so everything is crap. So all I can eat is cardboard, rice. I can't even eat chicken. A at that point it's like I'll take my chances, you know? I very important that we're not just pumping our children full of sugar so in a way i'm thankful but also as an adult i'm like i also want the ability to just kind of have that we don't ban chocolate cake but then right? again, we don't market chocolate cake to children as a breakfast treat not even a treat okay true just a meal then again i grew up believing that donuts are a breakfast food and i stand by that belief certain crumb coffee cakes are also uh, breakfast food in my book so my brain is a place that's so confusing <laughs> you got coffee. warring cultures up there i mean the fruit loops in the states are flavored with like artificial grape flavors and berry flavors in the uk and i'm not kidding here their fruit loops are flavored with nettles and spinach I'm sorry, what child is gonna be like, mmm, things that hurt me unless I have a dock leaf or spinach. It's like vegan bur it's it's like it's like vegan bacon. It's like at that point, why even call it bacon? Why even have it? Just don't have bacon. Why do you have to make an, a vegan bacon? I uh, at that point just just call it something else. Call it vegetable loops. I, it's literally made of spinach. But research in this video has helped me realize that's why it's so hard to find my second favorite soda, Sunkist. It's just the specific E numbers make it just not really that profitable to sell over here. Also, if you are wondering, birch beer. That's my favorite soda. Very hard to get. Pretty much only in the northeast of the U.S., but it's the best. One Do you know what my problem is, okay, with, with all this stuff? I, I get it, and a lot of the marketing to kids stuff is messed up. But when it comes to a stuff targeted to adults, stay the hell out of it. I'm not saying like if stuff caught is radium or, but if, like if something has a, a, may give you a one percent greater chance of cancer. And by the way, one percent. I hate these statistics. It's like. This elevates your cancer risk by 50%. And I'm thinking like, oh my God, if I eat that, I have a 50-50 chance of getting cancer. But it, it means like 
you have a 50% increased chance of what you used to have. And so really it goes up from like 0.01 to 0.02 or something. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I, 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 there was a thing where I remember I was in middle school. I was in seventh or eighth grade, sixth, seventh or eighth. It happened in middle school. And they took out the town and the school decided to take out uh, sodas and the ice cream machines from the school, right? Because it was a health thing around the, you know, and you don't want kids to have all this access to soda and, and, uh, and ice cream and, and snacks and gummies or whatever. And that's fine. But that's for kids. At a certain point, I'm like, government, get the hell out of here. <laughs> like, I uh, just, I don't, I'm not saying it's not a good thing for a government to check what is harmful for its citizens. A government would be bad if it didn't do that. I'm just saying, I don't know what I'm saying because I also don't want people to just make a profit off of hiding crap. I don't know. 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 Just Final interesting note I found research in this video is that it seems the U.S.'s Food and Drug Administration care more about probabilities. How small is the chance that a negative side effect could happen? If small enough, that's okay. Whereas the European agency is more focused on possibilities. If there is any possibility of a negative side effect... Exactly! That's exactly what I mean. I prefer this one. Okay? I call me crazy. I prefer the top one because... Alright, is there... What's the probability? Okay. Let them know. Like, I would prefer this way with letting him know. You don't have to put, like, a, a, a uh, like, cigarette label, like, this will give you cancer right on the front of the box. Like, you don't have to do that, okay? But I, I, I don't want to be mommied by my country at the same time. So there needs to be a balance between not being mommied by your government in everything you consume and having your government at least tell you, you know, telling you something could be bad for you isn't mommying you. Not allowing to have something that could be bad for you is. And I just, I hate that aspect of it. it it's just like, j j you're not my mom, government, okay? You're not my mom. Stay out of what I eat with reason. Obviously, I I'm throwing out contradictions, I'm sure. I hope that you found the middle ground in my comments to get what I'm trying to say in a reasonable way, which I have not done yet. Especially in an additive that's non-essential, they'd rather just have it removed than risk consumer health. And so if you found any of these banned substances to be a bit blown out of proportion, well, you might be looking at it from more of a probability standpoint as opposed to a possibility one. But each agency is doing what they think is best for the citizens they watch over at the end of the day. What like, this is like letting your kid, this is like, letting your kid ride without a helmet, ride a bike without a helmet, right? Which isn't great. This is making your kid wear a helmet, uh, only be able to go down the street, um, do not hang out with other kids, um, wear all of these pads, put a bubble on you, and then roll down, okay? So, too much. Get the hell out of here. Uh, you should probably put on a helmet. Let's go in the middle. Let's not have all the pads, but let's have a helmet. And let's at least put on a helmet here, okay? So I, I think it, it's somewhere in the middle there. Essential, they'd rather just have it removed than risk consumer health. And so if you found any of these banned substances to be a bit blown out of proportion, well, you might be looking at it from more of a probability standpoint as opposed to a possibility one. But each agency is doing what they think is best for the citizens they watch over at the end of the day. Whether or not you agree is up to you. But let's just say foods dubiously banned in other countries is your passion. Well, why not tell the world about it by making a blog using today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace, of course, is your... Please be sure to uh, use Evan's link, guys. All in one ticket to an easy to build professional looking website. Start yourself a food blog using some of water. Squarespace's many Thanks guys for watching. Love y'all. And then eventually open up shop. Make a little shop page to sell people your recommendations. And with the ability to easily build yourself a mailing list, as well as loads of other tools to help market your business, you are sure to find success. And if you'd like to sign up to create a website of your very own, sign up today using squarespace.com slash Evan or use code Evan Edgar at checkout to get 10% off your one year plan and a whole month for free. So you might as well just try it out. Give it a shot. Anyway,
anyway, thank you very much to Squarespace for sponsoring, and let's wrap this up. As much as I loved a lot of the foods that I grew up eating in the States, my view on everything is a bit more nuanced these days. I'm a strong believer in bodily autonomy, and that everybody as an adult should have the right to put whatever they want into their body. It's your body, do what you want. But when it comes to children, especially because a lot of these items are marketed at children, it gets a bit more dubious. I mean, a parent shouldn't have to religiously research every single item that they're giving to the child to make sure it's not a carcinogen, you know? However, I mean, they should be doing a little research at the end of the day. You should be looking, what am I giving my kid? But the majority of people probably aren't. So it's probably in our best interest to have these laws in place. I don't know. What is your opinion on this? Thank you very much for watching today's video. Don't forget, there is a part two coming in a week or two. So be sure to subscribe. It'll be right here when it's up. If it's not yet, I don't know. I've got a lot of other videos. So go watch one of those. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Goodbye. I don't want to be rude. But I think I'm done eating U.S. food. It can make you sick and ruin your day. But the FDA tells me the lobbyists tell them it's okay. Okay. Hey, I made it back in time. That's crazy. Bye, guys.